Hello everyone, uh, my name is Tom LeClaire, I'm the ASO manager at Wooga, uh, also the copywriter and I work with a lot of non-game apps uh, for app store optimization. And I wanted to talk to you today about uh, app store optimization for launch and how that differs from um, working with existing apps. Um, so I broke the... Uh-oh, uh -oh. there we go. I uh, broke this talk down into three. Firstly, talking about the app storefront. Secondly, talking about keywords. And thirdly, talking about promotion. Um, and going back to what Andy was saying earlier, a lot of this sort of stuff is secondary or complementary to um, uh, analytics. So a lot of this is sort of theoretical, not particularly deep dive, but uh, hopefully you should get something out of it. Um, so first off, when I talk about the app storefront, what am I talking about? Basically, this is the last um, stage before your user downloads your app. So the, the last sort of port of call, you're looking at uh, icons, titles, app descriptions, screenshots, etc. Uh, so all together, those make up the app storefront. Uh, and I just wanted to go through something first before I really get into, into stuff. Um, looking at the traditional sort of timeline of uh, an app's lifestyle. You start with concepting, prototyping, uh, production stages, soft launch, and then global launch. Uh, and sales very often comes in uh, sort of towards the end of uh, soft launch, moving into global launch. And actually, what I would argue um, is that it should come in here when you're concepting, uh, sort of prototyping, that sort of stage. Um, and there's an easy way to do this. Um, to, to start this dialogue with, with your sales team with this question. Are your sales team, whether that's community management, whether that's user acquisition, your copywriter, designers, marketers, etc., are they happy to sell your app? Um, it's, it's not an absolute, um, but if they're not, if they have reservations, then it may well be worth going back and looking at the, the development of your app and using your sales team in, during the development of your, of your app. Uh, and basically what I find this, this delivers is a more saleable app and uh, an app with far stronger USPs. Uh, so speaking of USPs, um, for me, an, any app storefront starts with, uh, starts with USPs. They should be defined early and uh, they should be absolutely integral to your app. I think the development process is a very... Uh, sort of complicated one. Lots of things go into your app, lots of things come out. And so making sure that your sales team are always looking at your USPs right the way through your development, I think can be very handy, but it can lead to a much stronger app in the, in the long run. Um, and when you're looking at your USPs, uh, there's two, two points. Uh, firstly, do they offer a specific use that your competitors can't? And secondly, are they strong enough? And if you can answer those, both of those questions with a yes, a confident, honest yes, then that's a strong USP. And in my mind, it's much better to have one very strong niche USP than 100 uh, watery ones. Uh, so... Uh, <laughs> one of the big problems when you're launching an app, I know this sounds very obvious, is that you're new to the store. Um, one thing that builds confidence in users and helps users download your apps is things like reviews, ratings, social proof. Um, these are scary fig these are scary numbers. The amount of apps going into the into the app store every day. How can you sort of rise above this if you if you have none of this and you're going into the app store? Actually, one thing to use in your app storefront which can build credibility in your app is social proof, and okay, your, your app itself won't have any social proof because it's new, but perhaps you have a previous app, perhaps you have a large community, perhaps you have evangelists, perhaps you have um, a, a web app that, uh, that has helped a lot of people. Um, and, and that's something to consider when you're new. Include this social proof no matter where it comes from. The second thing about being new to the App Store is that we're very, very good as an industry about telling people why we should download our app, why they should download our app, but we're not very good about telling them why they should download it now. 
And that's a really, really important thing. If you can, if you ask yourself, why should my download, why should my users download my app now? And you can't find a, a real answer to that. Then go back and, and find a reason, look for a reason. Because that first week, that first month can be really important to making your app a, a success. Um, so the third and final point about the App Store front is all about focus. And this, this first um, sort of sentence, a lot of people say this and it, it's often meaningless. But what I take from this uh, sort of sentence, making your, app, your storefront zing, it's not about, when you're creating an app, front, app storefront, it's not about putting your app behind other apps. It's not about copying the design, the wording, the layout, uh, the USPs. It's not about copying your competitors or those people that have been successful. It, creating Zing in a storefront is about highlighting the differences between your app and competitors. And the second point here um, is a bit of a bugbear for me. I work with a lot of new apps, and I always, or I very often see icons and titles to an extent not being used properly. Make sure if you're new to the app, if you have no brand awareness, that your icon and your title really say something about your app. You know, they, they have an icon, uh, a picture that describes your app as opposed to a couple of letters or a logo. And the third thing here about focus, um, it sort of seems fairly obvious, but don't try and cover all the bases. The more people you try and please with your app storefront, the less focused it will be. Okay, so that's all about the app storefront. Um, what about keywords? Um, most of this really applies only to uh, iTunes. Um, but the biggest difference, I think, between launch and an existing app um, is what something that I've tried and, and succeeded with a number of times is uh, for launch having three keyword sets as opposed to just one. So you would have your 100 character limit and three of those. There, there can be some crossover, but the first week um, would include things like a launch boost, your burst marketing, uh, featuring perhaps. The second grade of keywords, which would be a sort of step lower, uh, would be for after your, your major marketing pushes, after the launch boost, after the, any featuring is gone. And the third keyword set could be or should be for when your app is out on the open water, when you're not really doing any burst marketing, you're just doing performance or, or something like that. Um, and these three keyword sets will help accelerate your app store optimization for the first month. So how do you create these keywords? And th this is a very sort of uh, standard way of uh, creating keywords. A sort of five-step process where you generate 100, 200, 300 keywords, and then you filter those by uh, relevance and using tools like SensorTower, Mobile Dev HQ, et cetera. Uh, you then select which keywords will go into which uh, category, so you sort of split out the stronger ones from the weaker ones. Um, and then you should, after your initial month or six weeks, uh, audit that every one to three months. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily need to be big changes, just need to be checking this stuff. Okay, um, and much like with conversion, um, being new to the App Store creates, gives you a, a disadvantage. Um, but one way to get rid of that disadvantage is to use your week one launch boosts uh, and any featuring to really kickstart your app. So don't launch your app and then think, oh, I'll, we'll do the marketing in a week. We'll, we'll sort out our storefront in a week. Make sure that it's there and ready for day one. I see this so much. Um, the other benefit of being new to the App Store is that you can, it's actually quite easy to find those hidden gems at sort of lower, lower strengths of keywords. They can actually be relatively easy. Um, and the one big thing here about keywording as a new, as a new uh, app is to try to make sure that you're not trying to rank for those super, super strong keywords. That isn't how ASO works. Okay. Um, so, Third and finally, talking about promotion, this, isn't, uh, this is something I'm directly related to in terms of uh, copywriting. 
And what I mean by this is um, any kind of promotion of your app, whether it's user acquisition, community management, all of that kind of stuff that isn't directly related to the app storefront. Um, so I think this is, I, I work with a lot of, uh, a lot of new apps outside gaming, and this is um, one of the sort of scariest figures. And although it's debatable, what, what I take from this statistic that 70% of uh, smartphone usage comes from 200 apps, I take this to mean that it's probably better to work in a niche and grow rather than try and enter the app store, enter, give, give the idea that your app is trying for the, the, the top uh, 200 apps. Um, so working in a niche, I think, is, is, is beneficial. Um, and what about community? I think uh, one of the things I've seen succeed a number of times is evangelism. And when you're trying to create evangelists uh, for your app, it's far, far better, whether it's a, a single uh, Twitter influencer or a, or a large community, it's far better to get them involved in the development phase rather than create your app and then try and get evangelists involved. Uh, and the second phrase, making new the new old, uh, it's a bit of a silly phrase, but it means that, it, much like with the app storefront, try not to focus on the similarities between your app and the big competitors, but try and focus on the differences because that's where you'll find more interest from users. Uh, and finally, uh, with uh, promotion, there's a couple of, uh, sort of things not to forget. Particularly with Google Play, your old school web promotion, web tactics, outreach of blogging, backlinking, all of that kind of stuff, it can work. So if, if you have those skills in-house, Try them out. Use them. Uh, and the second thing about promotion is about starting early. And it's great to start early, but it's also terrible to start early and then let it tail off. So if you start your promotion early, whether it's discounts, whether it's content marketing, start it early and keep giving value to your, uh, to your users or your potential users. And the third point here is... Um, is an old sales adage, promise the world, deliver the universe. And I'm not talking about underselling your app. What I'm talking about here is delivering on every promise, going back to those USPs, deliver on every promise and then, and then extra. And that's how virality starts. That's how word of mouth starts. It's not about, oh, look how good this app is. It's, oh, this app is much better than I expected. Okay, um, and so there's one more thing. Um, if you need any more, if, you, if you're interested in any of this stuff, please feel free to talk to me today or email me, whatever. I'm always happy to talk about this sort of stuff. Okay, and lastly, I just wanted to thank James and uh, the App Promotion Summit uh, for hosting me and you guys for listening. Thank you very much. <laughs>